Well, good morning. As you can see, I'm flanked by two of the team called the Young Guns. We've got Jake Wildball here and Elliot Gray. Dan's gone home for the weekend and Tom Dove's finished his stint on the underwater DVD. Left a hero and uh, it's a very tough act to follow. It's a northerly wind this morning, so a cold one. You can definitely see there's less fish around, but there's a few starting to cruise over the top. I've done exactly what Tom done bait-wise, been trickling it up the margins, a mixture of cell boilies, the new bait from Mainline, a few tiger nuts and a little sprinkling of corn over the top right along the margin so the spot doesn't become sort of a halo of danger. They're used to coming in and feeding um, and it's getting to the point where I'm considering putting a rig in. There's a few have come down to feed, not many, not like when there was a subly blowing, but definitely I think if I've got that goo hook bait in amongst it, there's a very good chance that when they do come to feed in front of the camera, it'll be my hook bait. So fingers crossed, we're gonna trickle a little bit of bait in now um, and get the rig in. Here's the rig that's going out first of all today. It's a real awesome rig of mine that I've used for a number of years now. I've caught loads of fish on it, but I'm actually going to fish it slightly differently. I've watched those fish feeding and uh, I'm going to actually try it with a critically balanced hook bait as opposed to a pop-up. Normally it just sits off the deck like that with a pop-up bait and a snaffle's very cute carp. So let's talk about the hook bait first. On top, the almond goo infused milky toffee pop-up from Mainline. Basically, I've got the, the almond goo in there, been soaking it in there, and uh, underneath you've got uh, a little chewed down cell which has been soaking in the pineapple supreme and also the pineapple power smoke. And then underneath that, you'll see that basically I've threaded it on via a little um, ring swivel that's just on the shank and a little hook bead to keep it in position, trying to keep the bait tight to the hook but still with a bit of freedom of movement so the hook can flip and catch hold. Um, then a little bit of Supernatural on there and I've Albright knotted that to IQ 20 pound, that's IQ 2, and that's so it can reset itself, kick away, if fish pick it up and blow it out, which we know is a given these days, um, I want it still fishing for me. And then at the other end, we've got a little link loop, that's onto a stick clip, and finally the uh, drop-off inline setup that are favouring weed. We'll see that how that performs in comparison to the brilliant cog lead that's caught so many fish. But a nice little rig, one that I favour a lot, and I'm going to see how it performs critically balanced. That's got to be perfect. Looks good, Al. Looks good. Swim's just starting to smoke up a little bit. Um, we had gums come in to investigate. Um, certainly not the response to the hook bait that, that Dovey was getting. Maybe he's got some lucky uh, lucky pheromones that he's passing on. Oh, oh. gums again, gums go on, again, go on, go on. gums he's again. Got it, he's got it, he's got it. Oh, yeah, can't nail him. Yeah, he nailed it. He but he didn't. Ah, oh, oh, mate, gums. He's had more rigs in his mouth than hot dinners, this fella. Action, action, action. Um, they've just come in for that hook bait again. They really do find it really irresistible. They're shooting on that colour. Go on, go on, Gums. Go for it again, lad. See if you can nail it. See if we can nail Gums. He's going for it again. He's had it in his mouth. He's oh, got he's, it. He's, he's got it. He's about to out again. Jake, um, you can see why now I've got that IQ2 on, haven't you? You can indeed. Like we say, that gummy, or gums, or as, as he's called, every time he takes it, you can see the hook baits. It keeps resetting every time. And obviously, with the closed zoom, what we can see is it falling perfectly. Away from the leg. Resetting itself ready, yeah. whereas if it was another rig, it might possibly tangle. Well, if you had a braided hook link, or, or even, say, a soft-coated braid, then the likelihood is that would be falling down now and looping up. I found that when I first fished, um, using sticks or, or, or bags or whatever, they would always loop up the minute fish touched it. So it's good for a quick one, a quick bite, but not, not when fish are coming in and mouthing it and everything else. Um, but now I'm so happy because I, I love that rig. It's caught me so many big carp. Um, it's interesting to use it with a critically balanced hook bait as opposed to a pop-up. Um, but I'm hoping if another fish comes in as opposed to gums, because I really don't think, unless we use a stiff choddy or a little hook, yeah. hook a little rig you use, don't you, El, that's got a real stiff bit at the end of it, um, that it might go in and just lodge itself somewhere when it moves. Um, I just don't, I don't think it's catchable. Um, I really don't.
Well, we, uh, we had a few fish interested in the spot, um, and then literally we were changing the radio mark battery. Um, there was no fish in the area. The, the bobbin started making plenty of noise. Elliot was actually stood by it at the time, and he went, oh, bobbin's off, clicked off, and I looked back and there was no rig there. Um, so obviously, probably a fish trailing line or something has dragged the whole rig, the lot, out of the swim. Um, so we've had to redo it, but it's uh, landed cock on again. Um, bang in the kill zone um, with the foam when it melted it uh, sat a little bit funny a bit close to the lead so one of the elements of having the underwater camera is you can tweak the lead back a little bit um, the hook bait pretty much stays in the same position yeah, doesn't it? pretty much yeah and it just the lead swung round and straightened out yeah but obviously you have to pull it the end the slightest bit and if you pull yeah. it too much you can nick the hook point or spring the rig out of position but yeah it's uh it's all right there um, everything's sat sweet, we just need the carp to come back. Oh, one's going, boys! Ah, oh. oh, it's just dived down out of nowhere. Isn't it? Just, are oh, they coming in, lads? It just started looking good. Oh, loads of one's going for it again. Oh, wow. They've just out of nowhere, just two carp. Just took me totally by surprise. Oh, here Thanks. comes another. Oh, that was a <laughs> decent. That's, um, I think that's the one I caught on thinking tackle. <laughs> Interesting, mm -hmm. maybe, the, maybe the smell of that hook bait's gone, so they're not getting that aroma um, from the goo now. Um, rig's been out a long while, so I, I'm considering probably recasting it in a bit. If that happens a few more times, I'll probably have a recast. Well, we've decided to have a recast. Um, there was a couple of real bits of interest in that hook bait by the carp. They were shooting in, obviously seeing that pink colour, but where it had been out for a few hours with no fish um, coming up this margin at all, um, milling around uh, in open water, just soaking up the, uh, the lunchtime sun, um, they suddenly switched on. I don't know what it was. Jake had a look outside and he said that the wind suddenly calmed down. A few fish darted in, but they nosedived to the hook bait and just turned away at the last second. One touchdown. So I've actually redone the hook bait mainly because that goo sucked into it. A lot of it would have washed away over a couple of hours. Um, so I've been drying um, some almond smoke on the outside, sat on top of a, a little, uh, little lid outside and uh, hopefully that's gonna ooze off a lot more attraction and get them eating that hook bait this time. Oh, go on lads, go on son. Oh, oh you done me. <laughs> yeah, he's coming along, he's going towards the hook bait. He's Lying. going, go on. Oh, it's small plated, it it's small plated, he's just, oh my word. What it a is the small plated in the swim. He was, he was feeding along there. He was going along, 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 and then right come up and then went off. Oh, wow. Three little mouthfuls, tilted. Uh, incidentally, did it look like he ate corn or boilies? Because, Jake, I know you said... Um, no, he's eating bits. He's eating bits. You, yeah. said, he, following the same you said he got caught a couple of times couple on of times, bits of just, corn. Just on corn as the hook bait as well, so... But that's the closest we've had in feeding. Actually, when there's a rig in the water and in the swim, having a go. Oh, here comes one, straight for the hook bait, straight for the hook bait. No, oh. same fish, does us again. Oh, my life. Oh, oh go, on, go on, lad, go on, lad. Oh, we'll take you, we'll take you, we'll take you, we'll take you. No, nuzzled away. What's he having? Boiling. Yeah, Boiling, yeah, that's no, all. No, he didn't have a boil corn. Right, well, here we go. We've got the, uh, the little rig adjustment that I spoke about. Basically, it's all, for all intents and purposes, exactly the same. The only difference is I've increased the length of the supple section of the supernatural element of the combi. Um, it's still quite a long hook link, but because it's a 20 pound IQ two hook link, it's, it's pretty tight, it kicks away from the lead. So making it shorter, I don't think it'll make that much difference the way these fish are feeding. Um, this one, well, the previous version has been in a few fish's mouths. So just this little tweak, we're gonna see if an extra bit of suppleness will allow them to take it a little bit further in their mouths and hopefully get nailed. So gonna get that back out there. Oh, here we go, lads. Go on. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. He's got it, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's on. Oh man, what a long day, working really, really hard. And uh, 
my second take on the underwater camera. And it didn't look like that one was nailed, but we were worried about how it was sitting. Changed the hook bait, a brave move. I've decided to recast at bite time because I felt like the, the fish weren't responding to the hook bait because of the extra buoyancy in it. But the hook made the hook bait exactly the same as it was earlier and uh, rewarded with a bite. Do you want to get down there, Jake? Yes, mate. I'll tell you what, my knees are jangling. You don't know how badly I want this. We found out a couple of absolute deadly tactics as a result of this. The, the pink coloured hook baits in this clear water and you know, the re response to the goo is just quite extraordinary. Come on, baby, please, please, please. I suppose I was the first, the second ever person to get a bite on the uh, underwater cameras after Dan, but then Mr. Dove put on an absolute masterclass. And I felt so much pressure, and especially with that weather being like it was today, those cold northerly winds, and I just felt one bite today, just to get off the mark, would be lovely. Come on, baby, come on, come on. I'm just gonna walk back, walk back gingerly. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Get over there, you Swedish monkey. <laughs> yes, get in! <laughs> <laughs> My first underwater carp in the net. I am absolutely ecstatic with that. Get in there, what my son. Is, yes. Sir. I lift, you hoist. Or you read, I'll hoist. There we go. Ooh. 26.12. 26.12. I'll take that, mate. Absolutely <laughs> over the moon. Right. I can't quite believe it. Look at this stunning 26 pound 12 Oxfordshire mirror. Let me hoist it up. Just like when Dan caught the big plated, words can't describe it, to catch your first fish on the underwater DVD. And you know what? There's only one person that I can dedicate this to. It's the man who started it all, Mr. Fairbrass, the gaffer, as I like to call him. He gave us the opportunity to fish on the underwater DVD and to nail one is just one of the greatest carp fishing achievements of my life. Just words can't describe it. I'm so happy, elated in fact. A stunning, stunning mirror carp, one of the wily day ticket carp in this lake. He'd come in, nearly had it a little while before, and I got him the next time. What a beauty, made up. Cheers, gaffer. Well, good morning and what a beautiful spring morning it is. We've had so much rain over the duration of this shoot, but finally the sun's shining and I believe there's some westerly winds coming as well. Pressure's still high, but there's some carp in the area. So I've made a couple of tweaks. I've had a night to think about it. Um, we had a few tangle problems, mainly because of that flow coming in. Um, it tends to kick the hook link back over and also the shallow depth. You hit the clip, but the lead doesn't have time and the rig doesn't have time to correct itself on the way down and sometimes it ends up tangling. So what I've done, I've made a rig adjustment. Um, I've added an anti-tangle sleeve at the swivel end. That will hopefully keep that hook link away from catching uh, the safe zone leader. And then I've actually gone for a running rig this morning, uh, a running shocker. So it's all bedded in there. There's a little bit of resistance when they pick it up, but then it finally pulls away and the fish will think it's free and then bang, it hits that top bead. It's on the first bit of tungsten on the safe zone leader and that's it. Hopefully that will trick them and uh, we're gonna get it out there and see what today brings. Well, the rig is in um, and it's sitting really nicely. Took a few cars, landed just, um, I was just landing in the gloom and then too close to the camera, so one's gone in um, and it's probably on the outer part of where we're willing to feed um, film because it's very, very cloudy. Um, the rig is sat nice and cocked to be fair. That anti-tangle sleeve um, has seemed to really cure it um, exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, it's kicked and also it's put a nice arc in the hook link as well because I really do think that you need 
a bit of movement unless they come from the perfect direction to pick it up where they they pick it up and come towards the lead where they get a bit of slack if they come away from the lead and with a stiffer uplink it's all tight and away from the system I think there's a chance that they know instantly there's something wrong and spit it out so I'm hoping with that and the, the running lead that um, we've, we've got something a nice formula there that could trick them up they're moving quite quickly as well these mm. fish they're sort of motoring around you think the ones that do come to it are going to pick it up and move away like boily feeding and um, they've totally absolutely annihilated the spot you know we put probably about three to four key of cell and the new bait mixed together um, a little bit of mixed particle which is gooed up on the spot um, and some corn and there wasn't a morsel of bait left this morning um, so they're definitely conditioned now to come here at night for a good feed um, a lot of the big ones and um, I'm hoping that if you hang out throughout the day today, don't want it to be just the last hour because that's too much for the heart to take. <laughs> oh, oh. Go on, son. Oh, come on. You can have it. No, you're not. Oh. They're in and feeding. And that rig is cocked. <laughs> yeah, he's feeding there. Go on, lad. Let's go near it, isn't it? Go on, drop. He's dropping. He's got it. He's got, it. got, He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. We're in. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> the first one that's gone for it, and uh, he got walloped. Absolutely walloped. That's what we wanted. Running rig worked. Well, hopefully we get it in. And the anti-tangle sleeve definitely helped put an arc in that rig that uh, we weren't getting yesterday. It was going too straight. And that's good when the rig mechanics that you put into place after a night of thinking about it now's the first one that came down to it just a little sprinkling about got elliot to go around there i said it's the sound they come in on you know when they're not oh god a bird just flew through my line oh that was near disaster got walloped didn't he jake straight up wasn't he got to have that movement <sighs> we've been chatting about it the, the ones when the hook link's straight just doesn't seem to do them if they move away from the lead. It's great that the rig resets itself, but if you can get a rig that does both, then I think you're doing something right. Probably the smallest carp in the swim. <laughs> 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 Maybe there's bigger ones to come. We'll keep working at it. How are you? Jake! That's like the one you <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. In she goes. Fish number two. Brilliant. <laughs> In the pan there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Probably an eight, nine pounder. Definitely not one of the big ones that was on the spot this morning. Very close for one of them tipping down on the bait. But this one snaffled it first. But you know what? They're all welcome and brilliant to catch on the underwater film. Awesome. Well, we um, decided to recast the rod. Um, it was quite tight to the camera, very tight. Sort of the place that we'd expect to bite um, late evening, really. Um, we've got it back in the kill zone. I left it there for a couple of hours, hoping for fish to turbo in, but it really is such a hot day and the air pressure is so hot. Um, short of using maggots or casters or something like that, which um, you know we know they work, but we're sticking to what, what we've got. Well, um, it's been a long old day today, staring at blank screens. We managed to watch a bit of Sky Go though, um, watching the last day of the footy season to uh, while away the hours. The high pressure and the hot weather together has meant that there's been almost no fish activity in front of the camera since we caught that carp pretty much. It's just been absolutely bone dry. There's been fish in the bay. They've also scooted out into the main body of the lake on this southwesterly wind. Um, and it's taken a long time for there to be any feeding fish. There's one coming down to the hook bait now. Has he done it? That was gums, I think. He's got it. No, the rig's still there. Where? Was it? Where? He's done it. Oh, he's... where is it? 
That's the lead still, he's thrown it. I think it's gone under the... Oh! As the evening's drawing into a close, still a bit devastated by that, uh, <laughs> that carp that got away with it. I really thought we had that one, L. <laughs> um, everything was cocked well. Um, all I can imagine it was that bead, um, just from the recasting. I've not noticed that it slipped down the tungsten uh, fuse and onto lower behind the lead because everything else, it, it sucked it in. It wasn't gums when we looked at, at it back. Um, moved away, watching it back, the lead stayed still, the rig just came back, it was just flung to the side. Um, so the 100% record for that setup. <laughs> well, it wasn't quite the full setup, it wasn't the running setup. Um, yeah, just got away with it. And there's just the odd fish circling around, it's just nothing like yesterday evening when we had loads and loads of carp moving in. Um, we obviously caught one. We've probably got 10 minutes of light left, filmable light. Um, all the settings of the, on the camera have been adjusted to, to allow the maximum amount of light in so we can film for as long as possible. Um, so fingers crossed something happens. If not, see you in the morning. Good morning. As you can see, the thermal hat's back on. A total contrast to the weather that we had yesterday and really typical of what we've been having the duration of this underwater shoot. You know, you can never guess what the weather's going to do. In the bivvy, we've got Danny back. He's going to be keeping an eye on what I do and how I do it. Um, and we're just going to show you the rig. What's going out is exactly what we put out in the morning, but I'm just going to show you the problem that we had when that fish took that rig last night. The bead on the shocker had actually slid down here. Bad angling on my part because I hadn't checked it during one of the casts and it had slipped back down. So I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is put that over the first tungsten fuse. So this rig works exactly how I want it to. And then down here, exactly the same setup, anti-tangle sleeve, IQ hook link, all bright knotted to supernatural, curve shank hook, and that lovely hook bait that they just can't resist. Yeah, I've got it, mate. Just hold on one second. Yes, mate, you're just, just at the back of the bait. Um, it all looks like it's sitting okay to me. Oh, 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 oh here, we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. just oh. glitter oh, straight over it. Oh, and another one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, <laughs> over it. That's a big one, mate, and all that is. That is a big one. Give me the book. Give me the book. Give Let me make some notes. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, we're gonna get a bite, oh. we're gonna get a bite. Yes, we've yeah. got a bite. We got him. We got him, we got him. We got him. Go on, son, go on. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Epicano, brother. Oh, mate. Epicano. Bag of Was it that common? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, well, I don't think it's that big. Who cares, <sighs> mate? I know, yeah. <laughs> Just it. So that I rig was cocked, though, wasn't it? It was, it was perfect, mate. Uh. Put your boots on, play gilly. You're getting good at that. Do <laughs> <laughs> you see the delay from where it took it up before it realised there was something really wrong? I thought. Uh, uh, yeah, it's because that lead slid away. Yeah. Straight away, it's like I'm not happy, but I don't know why I'm not happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I know why I'm not happy, and then. <laughs> uh, like a bad fart in the room, you don't know where it came from, <laughs> but you know someone did it. <laughs> Now, do you think the subline compared to the contour fluorocarbon, do you think that's making any difference? Uh, in what sense? Well, in the sense that it's, com it's a completely different colour to what Tom used and what I used. I mean, I absolutely love the contour. The reason I chose to use the, my sort of longer range setup, if you like, with the subline on was just because um, I wanted just a nice smooth cast, you know, with the line getting, to, you know, I thought, yeah. Putting the contour on, you know, I'll openly admit you and Tom are so such accurate casters. You know, I can cast all right, but I'm not in your league. You know, and so that you just didn't want to be shamed. Yeah, I didn't want to be shamed, and it, it's so smooth and silky that I just wanted to get it out there. But it sinks so well as well, doesn't it? And the no, colour of it, the brown one, I just, it, you know. It's, but do, do you think though that having had a clear line in the swim for best part of three weeks now over the entire lot of filming? you think changing to a brown line can be, you know, if they're used to seeing something and they don't, then they see something different, it's... Maybe, but look at how invisible that IQ is on the bottom. I know, I just think, <laughs> as, soon as, you, as soon as you're fishing, I'm sure they know we're out there. Yeah. I'm sure they do. But the sub, I mean, the sub line, I used it here when I did thinking tackle. That's why I didn't worry about it, you know. Yeah, I yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, the, some of the 
best anglers in the land use it, don't they, on such tricky venues? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, I've used it loads. I just, I, I think sometimes it's just that having a different, something a bit different to the norm can be enough to trick them for a little while, you know? I don't know if I'd ever use that rig here when the weed's up, you know, because I wouldn't want that, that lead flailing around in all that weed, but... Yeah, um, but, I mean, mate, the, I've been out in the boat with you, you know, you know what it's like out yeah, there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a nightmare. It's within a couple of foot of the surface in places. But in the summer, it's like to the top, isn't it? Is it's it? like to the surface, yeah. Right. Oh, I'm just so nervous. Nice crowd building up behind. <laughs> Surprised they ain't started chanting yet. <laughs> what, fall off, fall off? Uh, yeah. Or Ali, Ali. Ali Bumbai, Ali, isn't it? Bumbai, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just walking back now. Oh. Come on, fella. Give him your Battled well getting that next. Got him! Yes. Come on! <laughs> Good work, son. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Mate, that's brilliant. <laughs> mate, that's a big one, that. I thought it was a 30. It looks like a 30 to me, mate. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, mate, that'd be quality to catch a 30. 30 pound common. Oh, that'd be ledge. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well done, son. Unbelievable. That's brilliant. There's a good fish, that is. Really That's nice. It. All my dreams have come true. <laughs> <laughs> he's a beauty, mate. Absolute yeah. beauty. I don't uh, think he's quite as big as we thought. Oh, it's but... the tatty tail one. Yeah, yeah, it's the tatty tail oh, one. Oh, I didn't yeah. realise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's been in there since the start, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. virtually. I couldn't catch him. Don't be silly. <laughs> you caught the one everyone wants to catch. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Still a nice fish, though. 28 on the button. Absolutely made up with that, mate. Well, how about that? One of the suspects that's been in the whole time we've been here, the Tatty Tail Common, as it's become affectionately known, and one that doesn't get caught a lot. Look at that mouth. Barely a hook mark in it. I'm really, really made up. It just goes to prove, you know, a little tweak to the rig, taking that drop-off in line off, adding that little anti-tangle rubber, and a shocker rig, and it's tripped up a very, very wily carp. Dreams are made when you catch them on the underwater. What a creature. Mwah. Oh yes, perfection, brother, perfection. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely going to get a bite there. The foam has just fallen away, I can't see any movement on the lead at all. Um, rig is sitting nice. Yeah, that's that's definitely, definitely a bite there, mate, definitely a bite. Yeah, it's just, it's proper middle of the dance floor. Oh, and it's arced again. Mate, middle of the dance floor, you've got your best kit on. <laughs> <laughs> if you work with Emma, you, 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 you'll be, they'll be all over you like a rash. New suit jacket. New suit jacket. New shoes. Yeah. New wallop. shoes, yeah. Wallop. Uh, it's landed. And look, it's just landed perfect. The, the lead's like nuzzled into a bit of the bottom. Your safe zone leader's sunk down. That's pushed it away. You've got that every time. It just does that arc. The tubing that the um, foam was actually still on. Yeah. And that's how it's landed from being bolt upright. That's how it's landed. Perfect. Yeah, it's pushed yeah. it away and it's. It's combating that flow that wants to push everything back along the <coughs> along the safe zone leader. That's uh, what a little mate, bit of kit that mate, is. I'm having that. Yeah. <laughs> that on tomorrow, a million percent. Yeah. A million. And look, they're circling. Circling, circling the beast. beast. Right. You deserve the box now, mate. I don't know, mate. I think it's uh, it'd be nice if you uh, capped both both. Shut up. <laughs> both ends. I would take it though. Don't yeah, get me wrong. I bet you would. You look at that on the zoom. That is sitting on top of the hook. Yeah. And that is exactly what you want. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. no hook in, in, in the equation at all. That's, that's a bite, mate, all day long. That's, yeah. And it's them little things, isn't it? It's honing all that stuff. Little percentages. So every it? time it goes out on the bottom, it's just sitting lovely. Th that, that's the difference between getting loads of bites and getting no bites. Yeah. It's the tiniest, tiniest little changes. Watch this, love. Look, see that there's a stick that's broken in half that is now resting against your lead that he's poking up directly off the bottom. <laughs> Mate, that stick, a couple have come close to it and they're going down and then going off because it's sticking up off the, look. Oh, look, he's a cheese. Look, look, how many fish are there in the swim? 
Oh, look, look, look. That's, that's the box. box. That's the box. Go on. Go on. Oh, my oh. life. Move that, that twig. Mate, that is like, that's like a Zeppelin, that box. Mate, they're smashing it now, aren't they? They're smashing the it, The weather's yeah. just gone glorious. It's quite incredible um, just how much difference the weather makes to how willing the fish are to feed. We haven't done anything different since first thing this morning. The same bait's in there. We haven't introduced anything new, but the weather has just turned right and the fish are now going mad. And you can put this into your own fishing. When you think it's right and the weather's right, generally it is. Oh, that was one very close as well. Very, very close. He's going to get another bite here. And the times when we've been here, when it's cold for the time of year, you know, we're into May now, you know, it's been eight degrees in the day some days. It says feels like five on the weather and it's just rubbish them days. And they're the days to put hardly any bait in, just fish one, you know, one single bait out there, perhaps a bottom bait on one rod, pop up on another rod. With the weather, it makes such a difference. You know, we've not got a line in the water most of the time here. We've got a whole bay to ourselves, four or five swims to ourselves. You know, there's bait going in every night. You think they'd be here constantly all the time and feeding all the time, and they're really not. If the weather's poor, they stop feeding and they leave the area. Weather gets good again, and it all turns on like this, and it can change in a heartbeat. And uh, it shows you that if you're seeing fish show at the other end of the lake and the weather looks good for down there, move, because they ain't going to come back up to you. You want to be going to them. And uh, that's the thing I've probably learnt the most out of this so far, is the weather plays a massive part in how you should be fishing and how many bites you should expect in the session. Oh, my God, look at this. How many fish are there there? It's like every fish in the lake has just turned up. I knew he was lying that hook bait. He's looking, he's getting closer and closer. He just won't go away, he's eyeing it again. He's eyeing it, he's going for it. I think he's gonna go for it. He's going for it, he's going for it. He's eating the one next to it. Ah, oh, just lifted up at the last second. <laughs> oh, he, he's, he's interested. Oh, box coming in the zone, just going up the top right corner. Oh, oh yes, he's, he's seen, seen it. it, he's seen it, he's seen it, he's seen it. He's gonna have it. No, no, it turned away at the last. Oh, he wants it though, doesn't he? Does. Spitting that out. Do you prefer a bit of pink? Oh, he's Iron it up. He's it's so it? close. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> he's looking, he's, he's got sat to be on looking, the floor. He? Looks looking. like a pike. <laughs> He's been on the phone to Lumpy from Welly, hasn't he? Oh, uh, mate, he wants that. He wants that. It's going in his mouth. It's going in his mouth. It's gone in his mouth. And we got, got him. Woo! Has <laughs> 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 like, the bobbing moved yet? Yeah, it's a. No, is it gone, Dan? Mate, it's on. It's on. I bet it's a mirror. <laughs> yeah, I think it, that was that just was unbelievable. Amazing, but I, I, had, I was watching the close-up camera and I actually saw it disappear into his mouth and was got like gone, completely gone. And he was like, oh, oh, something's wrong. And it lifted, I just saw the lid disappear and that's how we, yeah. we, we had him. Mate, that running in line. Devastation, on, isn't it? On, on this spot, that is the one. With a cock, that cocked rig. Yeah. Like that's why I think anyone that sucks it in properly that seems to gut it disappears, it's like it's game over for them. Yeah. Don't believe you on the others that didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable though. That's not really uh don't think it's a, it's just a lean double, isn't it? But yeah, it doesn't matter. It's doesn't a matter. chance, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well that was the one with the yeah. split dorsal. I've got a I've got a slogan for them up baits. Well, Forget blanks, trust, trust pink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forget blanks, just trust pink. Get in there. Got him. Yes. Good man. Another one. Success. Body like Baywatch, face Mate. like Crime Watch. <laughs> You've got like the deepest <laughs> net on earth. Look at that. It's taller than you, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, you are a god. You are a god. Mate, you dropped it in almost exactly the same position. Foam came off as it hit the bottom. 
I was just going to look at it on the close up, but it all looks really good. This is one of the key aspects that we've learned from the filming is that having something on the end they want to eat more than anything else is absolutely key. If we just had a normal boilie on there, it would take ages to get a bite because there's loads of normal boilies and all the others are not attached to anything, so chances are they're going to take them first. But by having a hook bait like he's got, that this on this occasion is soaked in the goo and is a different colour and obviously a different smell, it makes it more attractive without being scary. He's made sure that it's very close to the bottom, so it's not even waving around like a wafter, like a slow sinker. The bottom of the bait is touching the bottom. Top of the bait's buoyant, so it's always sitting up the same way. And that seems to be the perfect way in this situation. So if you're fishing over hard gravel like we are, that's what I'd recommend you do. Make sure that the base of the bait is touching the bottom so it can't move around. Something bright on the top, like a bit of a dumbbell that he's cut down or a bit of plastic cone, something like that. So it resets itself every single time. Um, that definitely seems to be the way to catch them on these sort of spots. Well, there you go. Fish number four, the second of the day, a real old warrior. He's been caught a few times, this one. And it was such an epic bite, the way it just slowly snuffled up to that hook bait, wolfed it down, and the rig worked absolutely perfectly. Nice result. Looking forward to another one, hopefully. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. That's Ramora, that's Ramora. He likes to have a, oh, he was close, wasn't he? This is a good fish. That is a, that's the, that's the big common, That's the it? big common, common, I think. I think that's the big, I think that's the 40 pound common, I think. Oh, here we go, mate. This is having it. Oh, spat it out fully. Damn. Oh, one's coming for it. One's coming for it. One's got it. Oh, same one, spat it out again. No way. Well, I am absolutely lost for words. Um, just when you think it's going to plan. <laughs> that carp motored in at, at just a rate of knots from the right to left, went straight for the hook bait, sucked it in, everything was cocked, didn't get nailed. The only thing I can think of is the hook points dinked or something because there's two fish have come in the space of three minutes, totally had the bait in their mouth, should have been hooked, should be now in battle curve with a carp but instead I'm sat here in this seat staring at a fishless screen. Chin up. Oh, oh, oh we're going to go up. Get the bite, get the bite. What happened? I'll wind it in, mate. Yeah? I think the hook's in the, I think the hook's in the bait. The hook's in the bait? I think so, yeah. Come and have a look. So uh, did it get touched? Yeah, I can't. Oh, it's up. Yeah, it's, it's up off up. the deck. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it did. Yeah. What happened? They... Well, it got it got it got taken. I didn't I didn't see on this camera. I only saw on that one, and the fish came in from there, so it hid everything. But then it it, it just went up off the bottom and went away, and and that's how we're left. So it's the point's actually sitting up off the bottom now. Yeah, something something wrong with it. It's been taken three times. Well, after three or four goes of actually getting it too close to the camera. Ali's got it in a lovely position out there. It's a little bit beyond the baited area. When I say a little bit, I mean like 18 inches beyond the baited area. Um, it's in a lovely spot where we get a bite from, definitely. The rig's sitting okay. Um, it's so different from normal fishing this because you've got that pipe flowing in. And you can even see on the close-up camera, you can see the weed on the bottom actually moving like it's a river. Um, you could put a, a slow sinking hook bait or a pop-up or something out there and it'd sit there all day and not get taken because it'd be moving around like that and you'd think there were no fish there but there's loads of fish charging up and down that margin. I've been around there to scare the ducks away and there are big groups swimming up and down. So what Ali's going to do now is put a bit more bait in but not on the spot. Up and down the margin away from the spot so they get some free food, get some in the mood for feeding and hopefully when they come into the spot they'll... St oh, that's him baiting up now. When they come into the spot, um, hopefully they'll be in the mood for feeding.
the day is closing in now. Um, it's uh, just gone six o'clock in the evening, which is normally a really good time for getting bites. Um, Ali's just putting a little bit of bait into the swim. I can see some sweet corn just falling down gently into the swim. That normally turns them on a little bit more corn into the area. Um, what we've noticed on his last cast, he, he's gone just past the camera and, uh, and sort of closer to a shallow area where the fish are spending a lot of time, where the, the inflow pipe is pushing in and the fish like to be in that flow. And although we're seeing a lot of activity in front of the camera, it just didn't seem like the right place for a bite. It was almost the water was a bit too shallow. So what he's done is repositioned it, got it out there first time. It's dropped a little bit further away from the camera than that we would like, but it's in a brilliant spot for a bite. That's a much better place for getting a bite. The water's slightly deeper slightly further away from the camera and that seems to be where they're feeding more where the other place is where they're more sunbathing and just socialising so we'll give it an hour there and see how it goes oh oh here we go and he's got it oh, oh spat it out spat it out mate yeah that was only little we didn't want you anyway oh, oh, oh there's one in behind it one in behind it oh can't see anything can't see anything yeah, i think i think someone uh there's two of us in this uh, in this bivvy, chatting to the camera. One's got golden balls and the <laughs> other hasn't. I'll let you decide who that man is. <laughs> you are a god, you are a god, you are a god. That is perfection personified. You could not have done that any better if you had placed it by hand. You will be proud of that, my friend. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well, so happy that landed on the money. Um, we decided as it's, I've probably got about an hour and a half left of fishing on this DVD. Um, I was trying to try this rig with a slightly different hook. We've gone for a short shank, wide gate pattern of hook. And I just wanted to see how that rig will perform. You know, I always use it with a curved shank, but to see how it performs with a new shape is really important. So hopefully it slips up a very big cart for me. Oh, oh that was really close. Little fully. Little fully. Interesting. You're going to get a bite. We're going to finish on, a on the Hamidi section on a massive crescendo. That'd be nice. Touch yeah. when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, heart is pumping out of my chest because the box common was just having a feed in the middle of the spot. I've got an hour roughly to go. The rig is absolutely cocked and in position. It couldn't be better for visual. Um, it's all sat nice and the big common that we'd all love to catch is just feeding a couple of feet away from the rig you know it's just a joke when when that happens you, you know how many times it happen in your fishing where you're where you've got the lake's biggest resident or your target fish it's here again i can see as a big it's either a big common or a big mirror but it's a big fish in the distance there just it's all going off it's all gonna go off um maybe with a whimper but it couldn't be sitting any better than that, really. Couldn't hand place it any better. That's, a, that's, that's the, the big, big common. common. That's the big common, mate. They're both in and feeding. Oh, oh, oh. He, he's seen oh, it. He's seen he's it. Having it. He's, he's having it. He's having, he's having it. it. He's having it. We've caught it. Oh, no, no, we haven't. He's a fat one, though, isn't he? He's a fatty, but there's two others that I'd much rather catch <laughs> swimming around. Oh, mate. You know what they say, beggars can't be choosers. I know. Yeah. I, I am a beggar, <laughs> but... I am going to choose tonight. To be fair, I'll be ecstatic just to, get, to, to catch Get another one. Yeah. There's, there's two 40 commons in this lake and they are both on the dance floor. They're in and around the dance floor right now. And, well, um, maybe my suit's too blatant, you know, they're <laughs> too cool for school. You're and known gonna... for a Larry suit, to be I fair, am, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, they're just oh, all to, they're look, just That's all the box again. It? Do you see they're the just... common scales? Yeah. <laughs> they just all turn up and it changes in a split second, doesn't it? You get one feed in, and it's like zero to hero in like, you know, two frames of the camera. Box common. There's a lot of box. Oh, here we go, here we go. This is a bite. This is a bite. You've got him. Surely no, you've got haven't. him. It's out, mate. It's on the floor. Briggs on the floor. All extended. Absolutely. What, what? Mate, he's had your trousers down there, hasn't he? Surely. Is that, that was just that That's big moved. Mi mi yeah, I know, he had it. He had it in his mouth. I'm sure he had it in his mouth. Oh, it's a common. It's the box. Turn you, mama. It's the box. Come on. Turn, come on. Turn, come on. Turn, come on. Turn. Oh my box. God, it is massive. That fish. Turn. That is. It's like. I think that's. Oh, here we go. 
Oh no, come on, turn, yes. Go round. Come on, mate, I so want you to catch this. Oh mate, I, I don't. really, really, I, mate, I would happily blank for the next few days for you to catch that. And just and just I'd finish, finish, you blank. finish 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 the program on a proper custard lot. I can't do it. Ali's the man. I'd I'd happily swap. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is a bite. And he's oh. missed it. Good lad. He's pulled away at the last minute. Move the hook around. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, you have been royally turned over again, bro. It's that same mirror. It's that same one. You've been royally turned over there. Oh oh oh. He's on the right line now, isn't he? That's what the is cheese, that? mate. That's, That's the box. Of... That's the box. That's the box. It missed the oh, hook no. bait. It missed it. Oh, it just missed the hook bait <coughs> by an in half an inch. Oh my life, Dan. What is that coming back? I don't know. That is just ridiculous. How close was that, mate? mate that is just ridiculous. <laughs> Box common, Mrs. Hookbait. We have to say massive thanks to Kurt, who's looked after us for the last three weeks. This is what he's providing us with. Look at that. Beautiful fresh pasta with chorizo, a couple of bits oh. of garlic bread. His food has been outstanding. So Kurt, thank you very much. Cheers, Bella. <laughs> Holy be Jesus. Holy be Jesus. Yeah, here we go. Got him. Oh, oh that was the like big that. common. Was it? That was the big common. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. That was, the, was it? it was. That was the big common, Dan. Yeah. Why do you think I just absolutely... Oh, God. 16, 26. 30. <laughs> Both of them. Oh, he didn't like that, did he? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You're going to catch him. Going to catch him. Going to catch him. Got him. Yeah. Got, got him. <laughs> got him. <laughs> no. No, he's got away with it. Really? Yes. Huh? Look, there's your rig there. Oh my threw, it out of his, threw it out of his mouth, mate. Another one's going to come pick it up now. That is a joke, Dan. If another just, one... No, just leave it there. Another, one, another one's going to eat it. Look. Let's go wide one. That's the... him. Oh, they've spat it out again. Really? Bin bag just spat it out. Yeah? Mate, they're having that rig's pants down now. Totally. Great <laughs> footage for the, for the paying punter. To be on the receiving end of it. No, it ain't good, is it? It's like a total dirty, kick dirty. in the goodies. Well, well, well. What a crazy, crazy end to an enjoyable day. Um, it just goes to show the fine margins between total success and total failure. Um, I tried a new hook. Um, that hook is still razor sharp. Unbelievably, pulling it back to straighten the hook link and reset it, the, sh <laughs> the bead is still in the same place, a fish is at it in its mouth, got hooked pretty much, swam off, shook the lead out, and uh, both big commons have come close, one's at it in its mouth, the other one just missed it, I can't, I can't put it into words, I hope it's made entertaining footage, I've certainly enjoyed fishing for them, um, I don't think I'm any closer to working out how to nail everyone that picks up my hook bait, but I'll tell you what, what I have learned is, is priceless. Yeah, lovely, Dan, lovely. Um, I think though, mate, it's, hang on, hang on. Uh, let me have a look. Oh no, it's okay, mate. Just tweak, just tweak your line slide. That's all right, all right, stop there. Perfect, mate. Leave it there, I was just getting you to straighten your tube in a bit. Um, yeah, you're right, right near the camera, absolutely perfection. Mate, that, that hit the clip almost right next to the pole, yeah. rather than behind Ding. it, and I just let it drop. Yeah, yeah. Normally, yeah, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have even left that because I thought leaving it dro to drop, it might not. Um, uh, no, it's perfect, fell straight through. I'd get, you'd have taken that for starters, wouldn't you? You pre bait with that swan muscle down here. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That was you swim in and jam it into the... Put it in last night. Well done, lad. Mm. It's cold. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, I bet that muscle was cold. Have you had trunks? <laughs> <laughs> G-string, man, and all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tight Armani's. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
I've just got one word for you, Acorn. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what they say about a man with no Armani? No Punani. <laughs> 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 Two fish just over the top there. Nothing's happened by 10 o'clock feeding wise because it's going to be warm today. I'm going to give them the bait. I'm not going to, I'm going to properly lever it in because they're all going to be here and the only way to get them feeding, if they're in a sunbathing mood, the only way to get them feeding is loads of grub. Oh, it's gonna happen, we're gonna get a bite while you're on the phone. We're on! We're, we're on! <laughs> well, amazingly, the first fish that has picked the rig up has nailed itself. Uh, I say amazingly, it's the rig that I started fishing with in, uh, in our last encounter at St John's. It's involving the cog lead, which means the fish picks the lead up from the center of gravity, from the heaviest point, and the IQD rig that I favor in my fishing normally. And it just shows you that what's working in your fishing normally is probably the thing to be with. And uh, the underwater cameras can be misleading as to what's gonna work. We've tried loads of stuff, and obviously the boys have been very successful, um, largely with what they fish with normally. I was gonna start with what I finished the last instalment on, but towards the very end of that very last day, uh, I thought I'd really cracked it after catching a fish, and then I got turned over time and time and time again on a combi rig. God, this fish is properly going for it. Oh, it's come off. F don't believe it. Oh, Dan, it's good. It's good. It's um, really, it's in the middle of the area, Dan. Not as tight to the camera as normal, but it looks so good there. Do you want to come and check it before you decide whether to wind it in or not? Dink, dink. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dan, that is so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Al, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping it there, mate. Quality. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, mate. Absolutely beautiful. Well, that cast has landed absolutely perfectly. Not too tight to the camera, right in the middle of the kill zone. I think that is definitely a bite. If anything comes in to feed, he will be catching one. Oh, 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 here's one. Go on, sunshine, hang on. We've got him, we've got him. Dan, you've got him. Well, whether this stays on or not, it is 2-0 um, when it comes to pickups to hooked fish. All day long, the fish have drifted around over the top of the spot, not really looking interested, which I've been surprised about because it looks like a fantastic day today, but it's very high pressure and the fish have been charging around on the top. And these are the sort of days, if you want daytime action, you've got to get on the zigs. No point having a bait on the bottom. We've had plenty of, uh, plenty of bait in the swim. I've been rebaiting the area, all up and down the margins, trying to inspire some feeding. And they haven't really been into it. And this is the first one that's taken the hook bait and the cog has nailed him instantly again. Didn't see the bite. Um, so don't know what fish it is. Doesn't feel like a monster, but I'd still love to get it in after that lost fish earlier on. So it's a little plate, is one it, Elle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is now an hour before the big commons turn up, and I was going to swap the hook over to a size four curve shank from a size six, but we've been doing other things, and I haven't done it. So this is a size six. Ooh. It's done me in some weed just in the edge here. Proper hairy stuff after losing one. You don't want to lose a second one. Great to see that rig working though, mate, isn't it? It is brilliant, out. yeah. Properly 2-0 as well. Yeah. Two pickups, two nabs. Oh, 
So these little ones, they're charging around and rolling on the line. It's not, not fun playing these at all. Isn't it funny, mate? Just total evolution back to the beginning. Devolution, yeah. Devolution. It's like the monkey to the man, back to the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it does show you, though, what works in a fishing situation works in this situation. And you can get decoyed by that underwater footage. That little bit of putty as well, mate, that's made a real difference out yeah, of that, that hook's lane, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, it's not often all three of us, or me, you and Tom, we never ever fish together, do we? So a meeting of minds in that situation, I don't think it's that small, is it? No, it's a nice fish, mate. Lead's come off, good. Good. Good, Cog. We love you, Cog. Come to Papa. Come on. Get in the net, come on. Come on, get in the net. Yes. Got him! <laughs> Well you know done. what that one is? That's not the little mirror, that's that big long one that we thought was 30 pound. It is, yeah, it's front heavy. <laughs> got... Excellent. This is one of the ones that's been in the swim for ages. We've noticed him almost every night. He loves the corn, didn't think he was going to eat a boilie. We're calling him the up front mirror. You can see there because he's big up front. A well, well chuffed to get this one. He's a real cute character. 27 pounds exactly. He went, look at that. What a beautiful carp. And on the devolution rig, going back to what we started with at the very beginning of the session, the COG and the IQD rig absolutely nailed him. Well chuffed with this one. Hopefully we're gonna get a bigger one still. Thank you, my love. Come on! Uh, okay, Dan, it's um, sort of bang middle of the shot, borderline the back end of the spot. Um, again, the, I'd recommend the foam you still come on? and have a look at it. Is the foam, how is the foam still on? Uh, foam looks off, Dan. Let me just get it up on the zoom quickly. Oh, we're going to get a bite. We're going to get a bite. We're going to get a bite. Oh, we just missed. Yes, we're getting yeah, a bite. Yeah, yeah. We're getting a bite. He's gone. We're He's off. We're Go getting down. a bite. If only I'd just stayed on this forever. <laughs> and not done all that mucking around. Still, all part of the process, I suppose. Tell you what, for a little common, this is properly given an account of itself here. What a lovely way to end the day. Get in the net. Bosh, got him. Wicked, another one on the cog. And there he is. Not big, but absolutely beautiful. Just about 17 pounds, this one. Scale perfect common. And absolutely nailed on that COG and IQD combination. Well chuffed to get this one, and we've still got another day to go. Who knows what we're gonna get. It is our last day of our epic journey. The weather is absolutely beautiful. I wish it had been like this the whole time. Got a gentle southeasterly breeze just blowing into this corner. All the bait we put out last night, and I put a lot out, about four kit of boilies, a few tigers, loads and loads of corn has all been eaten. The spot is absolutely polished. So I'm going to get the rig out there straight away. There's the odd fish swimming about, but there's not loads in the area because there's no bait left. But today is an experimenting day. So I've got this radical fella on just for the start of the day. So the same hook bait I've been using, the pink squid and fruits that have been so successful for me. An IQ2 hook link, but you see there, there's no hair, there's no D. The bait is actually sliding on the hook link. And what we're hoping is going to happen, it's going to go in, and if the fish ejects, that's going to slide back out of the mouth and the hook's going to stay there. It might not work at all, but it's our last day, so we're going to try a few new things. Still with the cog lead system, that's been really effective for me. Three pickups, three hooked fish yesterday. So I'm going to carry on with that one. Start with this and then we'll see how that goes, and then I might even put a pop-up out, because Elliot's here, and he only fishes pop-ups, and he said he would definitely fish a pop-up on that hard spot. So we're gonna chuck his rig out as well, and see the fish's reaction to that. But for now, I'm gonna get this out, put a little bit of bait around it, and see what happens. See you now? Yes, Dan, yeah, I've got it, mate. It's bang center of shot. Um, it, it's pretty central, just borderline the back of shot, but I've, we've got good visual on the zoom as well, mate. I think. Uh, 
to come and have a look at it. But everything's down, foam's down the lot. Um, it looks like it's sitting by the hook as well this time, which is good. Um, it's all laying really nicely, Dan. Nice one. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> well, I think one just came for a look. Another one's coming for a look. Oh, 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 did they have it in their mouth? I'm not sure. But we've had two just come out of nowhere and uh, come and feed and go straight for that hook bait. Um, I don't know if they got it in their mouths, but definitely, definitely that rig, if it did go in, did absolutely nothing. Two came within the space of a couple of seconds, one after another, both came down, fed on the spot. Um, that little introduction of bait has clearly, clearly uh, got them in a feeding mood very quickly. Oh, oh, we've got a fish, we've got a fish, this is close, this is close. It is the remora. Yeah, he's just been in down a little yeah. bit. He was feeding he's corner coming, shot. He's coming, he came in from the right angle there And as he's well. got clay all down him. Yes. Okay, I'm all clipped up. I'm going to wind it in. Um, I'm just getting impatient. There's too many fish passing over the top of the area. Nothing's going down onto the hook bait. So what I'm going to do is use the same bright pink hook bait, but one that I've been soaking in the goo, in the Almond Supreme and the Almond Smoke. That's the stuff that was doing the business for Ali and Tom earlier on in the session. So I'm going to wind this in, put that on, whack it back out there with the same rig on, and see the fish's reaction. Another one coming in on the right line. He's going the right for line. It. He's going for it. Mouthed it. Mouthed it. Blew that bait out. Right, that rig is coming in. It didn't even go in his mouth, did it? Didn't even go in his mouth. No. <sighs> well, very, very interesting things here. You were probably uh, screaming at the telly when I put that rig on in the first place, saying, don't do it, don't do it, it ain't gonna work. And you were right. Um, three times now we've had fish pick the hook bait up um, and it just it, it just doesn't do what I thought it was gonna do. It doesn't drag the hook bait in. Um, doesn't drag the hook in. It drags fish, it out. <laughs> well, that fish mouthed it, didn't it? And yeah, it, just, it, it just stayed where it was on the hook link. It didn't shoot up the end and pull the hook in as well, which I hoped it would do. Um, but the other thing that we've seen um, is that they're loving this hook bait soaked in the, the almond supreme and the almond smoke. Um, that, that's three times fish have gone down to it in quick succession, where the other hook baits had a, had a couple of inquiries on this same rig earlier on this morning, but certainly not the intensity that we're getting on this one. Um, having said that, um, I'm sure everybody's waiting to see a pop-up out there and uh, Elliot has um, painstakingly put his favourite pop-up rig together, which is a version of the hinge stiff rig on lead core. Um, so I'm going to cast out exactly what he's put together and um, we'll see what the fish's reaction is to that. If it gets ignored, come, it's quarter to 11 now, we'll probably give it till two o'clock at the latest um, and then we'll get one of those goo infused hook baits on with my D rig um, to catch the box common later on this afternoon. Have a good time as well. <laughs> This is the little bit of trickery that Elliot, aka Elbow, will be casting out on most lakes this season. So we've got a pop-up there on a bit of 25 pound mouth trap. And that's got a D on the back of it with a size six choddy that he's fined the point down on, sharpened it really aggressively there. Big counterbalance on that to hold it down. He wants it sinking fairly slowly on this particular rig. And then that is attached using the all bright knot to a bit of 20 pound end trap soft. And there's a little break there, there's a little bit of exposed braid just underneath that bit of putty. I don't know if you can see that. That helps everything to swivel round. Now remember the hinge stiff rig in the past would have a swivel there to enable it to do that. But the braid does that instead. There's a little tiny bit of putty in the middle of that boom section. And then a large loop by the size 11 ring swivel there. Again, giving it more movement as well. And then lead system wise, we've got helicopter rig. So we've got a small pair lead on the end there, a bit of three mil silicon 
with one of our new beads underneath there. And then above that, you've got a no trace bead that will actually pull off. If this snaps and the fish is dragging it around, that bead with a slit in it, I don't know if you can see that there, that will pull off the top of that sleeve and then the hook link sliding down the leader with no bead in the way at all. So as safe as you can possibly get with a helicopter rig. That's what he reckons he's going to do the business. Let's get it out there. Oh, yeah, you'll take that, mate, all day long, schlong. Nice one, lad. Beautiful. Well, we have Elbow's rig out in the swim now after far too many casts, I have to say. Um, there's a bit of a, a crosswind coming. It looks brilliant in this bay now because the wind's blowing in there. It's overcast, it's still mild. But you like to use light leads, don't you, mate? Yeah, I do, yeah. Um, and with a two ounce lead, when I've been casting a three and a half, a two wanders in the wind so much more and uh, I just wasn't getting it there perfect. So uh, we persevered, it's out there now, and we've seen a fish sort of approach yes. it already, haven't we? Mm. Um, but it did, yeah, there was another fish coming into the, oh, right, right on cue. Couldn't have asked for it to happen at a better time. Uh, is, that's gums though, isn't it? I think that is gums, the one we said. He's eaten every single rig that's been in the swim, and he's been caught on nothing because he's got a funny protruding jaw and he is just moving away from it. So we've got a swim black with carp, haven't we, at the moment? Yeah, yeah they're here, aren't they? They are properly here. So no better time than to test this. Now, you like say you go sandhurst, it's rock hard gravel, you cast this out. Yeah, I will, if I fish with boilies, I will generally always fish a pop-up, yeah. Irrespective of the lake bed? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Right, and you catch loads? Yeah, it always works for me, yeah. Yeah, it does. Double takes and all this sort yeah, of thing happening quick, over bait. Quick and bites over bait, double right. takes. You know, bite within five hours, oh, bite within oh, ten oh, minutes. Oh, what's that one? The fully. No, it's not. It's, it's one of the fully scaled. Uh, 2921, that is, Al. One of the big fully scales that we've not caught that we've seen on our little plaque of fish that it says on there 27, but it looks bigger it looks, than that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It looks like 30 pounder to me. Um, well, th there's no better time to test this, is there? No, no, you know? I it, agree. It, it is moving around a little bit, and it, in, it that, is, in it. that flow, just a, every now and again, you just see it wobbling. Oh, another feeding fish coming in. Oh, this is he going away from the shot? He just. Look, I mean, that is close. That is really close. That is really close. That is really close. It's gums again. It's gums again. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, he's got it. No, he hasn't. No. Oh. He's approached it and just just, just pulled away it. at the last minute. The hook swiveled round a bit, isn't it? Yeah, it's facing yeah. away from the camera now. Right. Well. He didn't spook from it though, did he? He didn't spook, no, but to be fair, Gums has eaten everything. <laughs> I think he just knows he can get away with it. So he, he's, he's really blasé, that fish. But um, this is really good, mate. We're going we're gonna to give you a, a good couple of hours out yes. there. There's plenty of bait spread up and down. It's sitting perfectly. It's, I couldn't want it to be sitting any better than it is. No, no, the lead core is nice and flat to the bottom. The lead just looks like a stone. You, you a little bit of putty halfway down the hook link, that's really helped, yeah, isn't it's, it? Yeah, braid is sitting perfectly flush, isn't it? Yeah. Going over a stone and then back down the other side of it. And what's, how would you describe the buoyancy of that hook bait? Is it, is it a, a critical, is it is it sinking fast? What? Well, use, I'll use a really buoyant bait, yep. in the fact that the buoyancy stays throughout. Right. You know, the, the less buoyant your bait is to begin with, the more it can be affected by the water, the water being absorbed yeah, in. So it just ends up falling yeah. over, falling over, and it will eventually become a bottom yeah. bait. So right. then having a cork board in the middle, it shouldn't change buoyancy at all. No. Um, you know, I set it so that it falls relatively slow, you know. Right. Um, it will probably sink a bit quicker once you read it in a couple of hours, but it won't change a lot because right. there's only that small bit of pace around the edge. To right. And that's how you like to fish it. Regardless, yeah. is it slow sinking, yeah. summer, winter, yeah. bait, no bait, you fish it the same? Yeah, I fish it the same, yeah. Right, okay. All right, well, you're under the spotlight now, yeah. son. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Fish. Go on, go on, go on. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yes, got him. <laughs> Get in there. Hey! Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to look at you to address you, I'm afraid. We are into a really good fish. Um, the first fish that is sucked in Elliot's pop-up rig. And I, I have to confess, I was rubbishing it about 10 minutes ago, saying how nothing's going to eat it on that spot. Fish have been in there for the last couple of hours, swimming all around it, feeding all around it and nothing has actually took it. Some have come very close and pulled back at the last minute. A lot have had a look and just given it a wide berth. And then uh, our friend Gums, the uh, decoy, has basically come into the swim and uh, not taking it, but a big common has come in with it. And where Gums was close to the bottom, the big common's come close to the bottom as well. And the big common sucked it in and this is what I'm now attached to. Don't know how big it is. Feels, feels a nice weighty fish. Not one I particularly recognise. It was a gamble putting somebody else's rig on and to be honest with you, this rig had 10 more minutes and it was coming in because there'd been so many fish around. The conditions today are absolutely perfect. Just a gentle breeze. And uh, what's going on here? It felt like it was caught on something, but it's nice, it's only just it's down here. Right. Yeah, I'm not be doing yeah. It's overcast, but it's still very warm. Nice, gentle breeze blowing. It's a nice fish, that is. Real nice common. Go on, Elbow, if you can get forward and get him in the net. Get him in the net. Yes, got him, come on! That's a choke. Well <laughs> done, man. That is absolutely awesome. Big common, mate. It's the big common. common. It's the big common, I just checked it. It's the big common. Get him. Mate, yeah. that's, that's just brilliant. You never stop learning, never. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy, you don't understand. <laughs> Mate, not as happy just, as me. Just, oh. just, come out the, just come out the back and just... We needed them it. less ballies in the swim, that's what... I, oh. Well, don't just stand there, tie another one. <laughs> Is it a 40 pounder? Yeah. Is it? Is it? Yes, it is. It's done me. Is it? It's that one, yeah. Dan, look at it, you know. It's huge. I want to get in the net with it. <laughs> Unbelievable, mate. Wait. How yeah. far? How far? The riding on the hook hole being pucker as well. Well, what an amazing result. Um, we've left the big common languishing in the sling for a little while just to recover. So while it's doing that, I want to talk to this man um, about his rig because. Um, you maintained all the way through, mate, didn't you? That you know, it's a, it's a big fish rig. Yeah, yeah. And we've nailed one of the biggest commons in the yeah. lake. So, talk us through your fishing and, and what makes you use that rig. Well, everything I do is based on one fish. You know, I don't join a lake to catch as many carp as I can. I, I join it for one carp. So, right. So I you'll select rig. the biggest yeah. one or a particular one yeah, you want to catch. Yeah, generally the biggest one. Right. You know, it's always a nice one as well. I don't I don't just fish somewhere because they're big. I like to fish somewhere with something big. And, and beautiful. beautiful at the same yeah. time, yeah, right. you know, okay. like fish that you can't easily repeat, you know. Yep. I don't want to get bored of catching fish, I'd rather slug it out for one and right. every time I get it, you know, have that feeling that doesn't yeah. come around very often. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you've done that ever since you were young. I mean, you're pretty young yeah. still yeah. now, yeah. aren't you? But you've yeah. done it ever since you started carp fishing pretty yeah, much, Yeah, I have, yeah. You? Like, there was obviously, as with anyone, I started fishing, just fishing for carp. Um, it was the first big one I saw, I then started thinking, I want him. Like once I'd seen him, I wanted him. Yeah. Um, and when I caught him, you just you sort of realise that maybe all the nights you do, you, you don't have to do as many nights in order to catch him. If you focus more on one fish, I'd right. certainly believe you can cut your time down. Okay, mate. So let's have a look at the rig in question that nailed him. So sort of a hinge stiff rig. Yep. But your take on it. So first of all, why have you not got a swivel there and like a stiff boom section? That stems back to sort of, uh, I think it was 2008, 2009 when I joined Yankee Car Park. Um, being young, I sort of, everything I knew worked. I immediately thought, right, that won't work there. I need to try something new, something, uh, you know, completely different that yeah. they're not going to suss. And if you look at a hinge stiff link, like your traditional one, um, you've got quite thick monos, swivels everywhere. It's quite crude. Yeah. It's, it's very, very successful. You know, you can't argue how many fish have been caught in it. But there's, there was room for improvement, I thought, as, yep. as far as your camouflage, all that goes. Yep. And that is 
after hours of rig time what I came up with. Right, okay. So they're standing pretty much as we see it there. Yep. Big heavy counterbalance, a little bit stripped back on your end trap. And with that bit of putty in the middle there, everything's falling away yep. nicely. And, and basically it's, it's nice and outstretched. And yep. when that, that common come in, it's the first one, wasn't it? Yep. It's warm, in it went and, it and you got it straight away. So why do you think a rig like that is, is, doesn't catch small fish perhaps and catches more bigger fish? I think partly because they do clock it, you know, it is crude, I think. A, a big fish, bearing in mind how it's size of its belly generally, its head, even when they're flat on the bottom, its head's further, you know, away, further away, whereas a small the fish, they can put their, almost their whole chin and their gut on the bottom at the same time. Yep. I think they do, they do see it, they do create, you know, they they're aware it. of it, yeah. Right. And and that, whereas the bigger fish, I, I think, you know, same to us, a pea looks small to us but to a baby it's bigger isn't it yeah right okay i I'll think it's it. the same sort of thing right okay so the same probably the same reason why a choddy works and i've noticed when i'm fishing choddies you don't catch little carp generally no you no. don't catch bream you don't tend to catch no. tench because it's, it's all so it's crude. selective yeah yeah it's, it, uh, but that <clears throat> crudeness makes it selective yes um and then talking about the lead system you've got quite light lead on there i noticed when i was casting it was hard <laughs> to get it out there why do you use such a light lead with it I've, that's something i've always done I've always used small leads, um, did a lot of one ounce leads, and in the end I just stepped up to a two, just right. for easiness of fishing, you know, I can fish. Right. But why light lead though? What? Spoken Flash fish, it was always spoken, that was why initially, like, right. I used to use as small a lead as I could get away with. Right, okay, stop, so you're just finding avoid big fish in the area. Yeah. I cast you wanna, a lot. You, wanna, you cast a lot yeah. to fill the drop, yeah. so you want to get it out there with minimum disturbance. Yeah, and the bigger right. the lead, the bigger the sound. And right. I've, I've seen fish before, I've been up trees in that, and I've seen someone cast that in a swim two doors from where I am and they spook and the upon impact of a lead that's 50 right. yards from where the fish are like. Right okay and these so, are low stock waters, yeah, not many fish generally. in them, not like where we're fishing today because we, we've actually noticed out there that when we cast the fish actually come yeah, in they to do see come what in. it is, yeah. you know, so it's, you know, it's a completely different kind of fishing to what we're experiencing generally but my god has it worked. Yeah it has its place, it definitely yeah. has its place. Wicked. Well that has without doubt added another dimension to my fishing but Forget all that, let's get that fish out of the water and see how big it is. Now obviously before we get this gorgeous fish out, we're just going to check his fins are flat against his body. Yeah, all yeah? good outside, yeah. yeah. Cool, and because it's a big one, we're going to lift it out together. Oh. Oh. Right. Yep. Wow. Couldn't write it, could you? Nah, you couldn't no. write it, mate. <laughs> Got up from that rig had 10 minutes before I totally and utterly rubbished it. Starting to worry then, when you said that. And then you caught me this. <laughs> Look at that. Where was he at? Look at that. That very, very yeah. rarely Is gets caught. Is it there down the inside here? That's the hook mark in there. Right. There. Right, beyond, exactly where you want it, behind yeah. that behind little hard lump. Bit, yeah. Behind that lump there, yeah. Mate, I'll be mostly casting that rig out when it comes to park. Yeah. All good. Fins are all flat, are they? Is that flat under his body? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And it's a 40. Right. So still. Really? Yeah, it's 40. Whoa. Hang on, hang on. Drop it down, drop it down. 41 and a half, I would say. Get it steady. I just can't believe it, mate. Right, is he up? He's up. 41 and a half, just over. Come on! <laughs> oh my word. Mate, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, that is amazing. Amazing. I just can't believe it. Right. Look at that. 41 pounds, nine ounces. What a way to finish our underwater journey. This is why we come to St. John's. Awesome characters like this. He's been in the swim loads. Several of us have had him take the bait and not hooked him. And then thanks to me, mate, Elbow, he's in my landing net. Absolutely wicked. That has definitely, definitely added loads to my fishing. 
hopefully it's added loads to yours as well. Thanks very much and we'll see you on the bank sometime. Look at that. What an absolutely beautiful carp to finish it all off. Thank you so much to Linear for letting us do it here. We've had an amazing time. Thank you so much, my love. Oh. What a monster. Come on! After 24 days, I get to wind in and go home to my lovely wife. Who f***ing <laughs> rah. <laughs> well, I was going to clip it up. Can you believe? I was just—I was going to clip this up and wind it in so I could cast it out tomorrow morning. Reprogrammed. <laughs>